Playing computer games was a 90s kid's dream. Only a few children had the opportunity to participate in those games. Some went to video arcades to play their favorite computer games and waited in line for a long time for their turn. Even if children of today have access to gaming consoles such as the PlayStations, they will never know the delight that was provided to 90s kids by playing on desktop computers. Those who grew up in the early 2000s recall a time when a swarm of excellent games first appeared on their screens. So if you were also one of those 90s kids, or even one at heart, then stick to the video, as we will be discussing 10 of the most iconic PC games from the 90s. Our list of the top 10 most iconic games is sure to take you back to the time when these games were more than a luxury for kids. If you haven't already, please subscribe to White Rice Time TV for more content. Starting with the number one on our list of most iconic games from the 90s, we have Wolfenstein 3D from 1992. Wolfenstein 3D is a first-person shooter video game published by Apogee Software and FormGen that was developed by ID Software. It was inspired by the 1981 Muse Software video game Castle Wolfenstein and was released on May 5, 1992 for DOS. It is the third installment in the Wolfenstein series. In Wolfenstein 3D, the player takes on the role of allied spy William B.J. Blazkowicz during World War II, escaping from the Nazi German prison of Castle Wolfenstein and carrying out a series of critical missions against the Nazis. The player must move through each level of the game to find an elevator to the next level or to kill the final boss, while fighting Nazi soldiers, dogs, and other enemies with knives and different guns. This was an extremely tense game in which you, playing the role of a criminal, had to figure out how to break out of jail. But the most exciting part was taking out the local law enforcement on the way out of there. Back in those days, this was the most played and iconic game of the time. Number 2. SimCity 2000 from 1993 SimCity is a series of open-ended, city-building video games created by Will Wright. The first game in the series, SimCity, was released by Maxis in 1989 and spawned numerous sequels and spin-off Sim titles, including The Sims, which became a best-selling computer game and franchise in the year 2000. There aren't many sims that have nailed the superb balance of simplicity and complexity like SimCity 2000. This game represents the iconic SimCity franchise at its pinnacle. The switch from top down to isometric view creates an intuitive interface and a simple, digestible view of the bustling cities that can be created. SimCity 2000 is a city building simulation game that set the standard for future games in the genre. It was critically acclaimed at the time for its graphics and gameplay, but it was the details of how your city functioned that made this game so engaging. It was fascinating to strike a balance between ensuring your city operated in the best interests of its citizens and not going bankrupt. Number three, Doom. Doom is a 1993 first-person shooter game for MS-DOS that was developed by ID Software. It originated from a 3D gaming engine created by John Carmack, who desired to make a science fiction game influenced by Dungeons and Dragons, Evil Dead 2, and Aliens. The first episode, consisting of nine levels, was provided for free as shareware the complete game, which included two additional episodes, was sold by mail. In 1995, a new version of the game called The Ultimate Doom came out. It had an extra episode and more difficult levels. The plot of the game was an interesting combination of horror and science fiction. The player is tasked with investigating an incident that occurred on the moon Phobos of Mars, while experiencing the game from the perspective of an unnamed space marine. As the player punches, shoots, and chainsaws his way through a variety of terrible environments, 
the humanoid enemies they face are gradually replaced by progressively more and more demonic foes. The game was a huge hit. It changed the genre so much that at first all similar games were called Doom Clones. It also made competitive multiplayer gaming an important part of PC games almost right away. Doom 1993 was a game that not only literally created a subgenre, but also managed to be incredibly entertaining to play at the time. Even though Doom wasn't the very first first-person shooter, it was iconic, as it was the first game that made first-person shooters into an experience that was truly fulfilling in every way. It was revolutionary in almost every facet, from graphics and networking technology to the styles of play. In fact, Doom has changed the direction of almost every aspect of PC gaming. If you have a chance to play, then there is a high chance that you will fully appreciate this game. Number 4. Warcraft Orcs and Humans The real-time strategy video game known as Warcraft Orcs and Humans was created and made available for use with MS-DOS in November of 1994. Warcraft Orcs and Humans is the first real-time fantasy strategy game from Blizzard Entertainment. You can take part in this story as either the humans or the orcs. During the conflict over Azeroth, which will be told through a total of 12 different scenarios, two different story arcs will develop. For the purpose of constructing buildings and producing new units, players are required to mine gold and chop down trees. Rich forests Gloomy dungeons and bubbling marshes await the stalwart enemies and armies that have been assembled to fight for domination. In this world, you can learn about swords and magic, which are two parts of traditional fantasy. You will have command over many different armies and creatures, some of which include knights, archers, clerics, warlocks, daemons, elementals, and necromancers who can bring the dead back to life. Number 5. Quake Quake was a first-person shooter video game produced by ID Software and distributed by GT Interactive. The initial Quake game was first released for MS-DOS, Microsoft Windows, and Linux in 1996, followed by Mac OS, Sega Saturn, and Nintendo 64, respectively. In the game, Players must navigate several medieval locations resembling labyrinths while combating creatures with an assortment of weapons. Numerous stone textures and a rusty uppercase font contribute to the overall mood of gloom and grime. Quake is heavily influenced by gothic fiction and the writings of H.P. Lovecraft. An opponent known as Quake, who is said to originate from another dimension, is invading Earth via teleport gates. The player assumes the position of an anonymous soldier who arrives at his base to discover that Quake has invaded and killed everyone. There must be a teleporter to Quake's realm somewhere in the base. The aim is simple. Take the fight to the enemy. Defeat swarms of creatures and exact vengeance. Quake was one of the first games that could be played natively both on local area networks and over the internet. Although players can work together to complete the challenges in the single player mode, the game's deathmatch mode is where it really shines. It is possible to compete in one-on-one -on -one duels as well as in teams or in a free-for-all format. The game places a premium on quick reactions as well as dexterous movement across the various stages. It is possible to play any of the single player levels as an arena, but the game also includes six maps that are tailored specifically for the deathmatch mode. Number 6. Duke Nukem Duke Nukem 3D, a first person shooter game, was created by 3D Realms in 1996. It is a sequel to the 3D Realms platform games Duke Nukem and Duke Nukem 2. 
Duke Nukem 3D follows the exploits of the titular Duke Nukem, as voiced by John St. John, as he fights an alien invasion on Earth. Duke Nukem 3D, along with Wolfenstein 3D and Doom, is credited with popularizing first-person shooters and was released to widespread acclaim. For little boys, Duke Nukem was the epitome of what they wished to be when they grew up. He was a handsome man with plenty of machismo who wore sunglasses and a red tank top and did not take crap from anyone. Duke Nukem 3D allows you to live out this fantasy by battling aliens in highly interactive environments with a variety of strange and creative weapons. The interactivity of the environments, gameplay, level design, and unique risque humor, a mix of pop culture satire and lampooning of over-the-top Hollywood action heroes were all praised by critics. Number 7. Age of Empires Age of Empires is a video game series based on historical real-time strategy, developed by Ensemble Studios and published by Xbox Game Studios. Age of Empires 1997 was the first game in the series. As of now, up to nine games in the series have been released. Players in Age of Empires can use their mouse to take control of a tribe they are managing, give them orders to construct houses, docks, farms, and temples. As the game goes on, the player's civilization gets better and better as it learns new skills. The player has the opportunity to go through the ages, beginning with the Old Stone Age, moving on to the New Stone Age, or the Tool Age, and finally reaching the Iron Age and the Bronze Age. The player can also ignore the game's historical setting thanks to a random terrain generator and a custom scenario builder that are built into the game. There are four different resources available to players in this game. Food, which can be gained through farming, hunting, fishing, or foraging. Wood, which must be logged by hand. Stone, which must be mined. And gold, which can either be mined or obtained through trade with other players. Age of Empires is a real-time strategy game. Therefore, its primary focus is inevitably on the collection of resources and the production of units. It was a huge commercial success with over 25 million copies sold. Critics say that the success of the series is partially due to its historical theme and fair play. The artificial intelligence players don't have as many advantages as they do in many other series. Number 8. Commandos Behind Enemy Lines Commandos Behind Enemy Lines is a 1998 real-time tactics video game released by Eidos Interactive and developed by Pyro Studios in Spain. Players take command of a group of six allied commandos who use small unit tactics to complete a variety of missions across wartime Europe and Africa. Each mission has a different goal, such as sabotage, assassination, or rescuing captured allied units. Players can see the whole map of the mission ahead of time to plan their strategy and how to carry it out. The core gameplay of Commandos Behind Enemy Lines consists primarily of solving puzzles. It is up to you to guide a group of six troops through 20 different missions spread across the entirety of the World War II theater. You will be tasked with completing missions in a variety of locations, including the Sahara Desert, Italy, France, and even Norway. Strategy is an essential component because you are outnumbered by a significant margin in the majority of the missions. The need for being unseen is emphasized due to the fact that if the operation is discovered, it will be far more challenging. Every time you take down an opponent, the number of guards will increase by one, and in some cases, they will also bring in additional reinforcements. The use of firearms is extremely uncommon, and quiet, unnoticed deaths are preferred over bro bloody brawls. 
Number 9. Command and Conquer Tiberian Sun Command and Conquer Tiberian Sun is a real-time strategy game that came out in 1999. It was made by Westwood Studios and sold by Electronic Arts. In the game's plot, the Earth is extensively contaminated by Tiberium, an extraterrestrial crystalline alien, and is becoming less habitable over time, while new life forms have emerged in areas of severe contamination. It had new semi-3D graphics, a more futuristic sci-fi setting, and new gameplay features like hovering or burrowing vehicles. The game's main plot revolves around a second war between the UN-backed Global Defense Initiative, or GDI, and the cult-like Brotherhood of Nod, both of which seek to rule over an Earth in the midst of rapid ecological collapse. And finally, number 10, Diablo. Diablo is an action RPG with an interesting tale that features the titular Diablo as the final boss. After selecting a warrior, rogue, or sorcerer, you must cut through waves of daemons and monsters while accumulating stronger weapons and armor in order to face the Lord of the Underworld. We hope you enjoy the video. You can tell us in the comment section below which game from our list of 90s games you like the most, and if you have played any one of these games. Thank you so much for watching the video. Please keep visiting the channel for more of these videos. Until then, Take care of yourself and subscribe to the channel if you haven't had a chance to do so. See you in the next video. Have fun gaming!